Donald Trump has won the White House with an historic comeback. The former President Trump topped 270 electoral votes and flipped nearly all the swing states to become the 47th president of the United States. Well, big wins in Georgia and North Carolina gave early indications that the Trump campaign was headed to victory. Jennifer Bashan reports. In a show of electoral might, Donald Trump has become the first president to win a non-consecutive race for the White House since Grover Cleveland did it more than 130 years ago. Trump's path to victory was blazoned by a trail that flipped nearly all of the coveted swing states. For MAGA faithful, it was a night of redemption. And I'm proud to be an American. Joined by his wife Melania and his children, Trump stepped out to claim victory in the early hours of the morning. Frankly, this was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time, there's never been anything like this in this country. He renewed his promises on the economy, immigration, and what he calls common sense leadership. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. Now he'll get to work forming his cabinet, along with J.D. Vance. A man with his own inspiring personal comeback story. I think that we just witnessed the greatest political comeback in the history of the United States of America. And he pulled off something that's eluded Republicans for 20 years. Along with the Electoral College, Donald Trump is poised to win the popular vote. Kamala Harris is expected to speak later today. Despite making abortion the cornerstone of her campaign, Women voters didn't turn out for her in the droves some expected. Trump won white women by 52 percent. He also won Latino men and white men. Christian voters also made a difference. Trump won 62 percent of the Protestant vote and 56 percent of the Catholic vote. Now comes the hard part of governing. He'll inherit an economy a majority of Americans say isn't working for them, along with two wars and mounting tensions with America's foes. He's going to have to worry about not upsetting the U.S.-China relationship so much that the economic costs spill over into the security realm. And reuniting the bitterly divided country. I think what we have tonight is a red, white and blue wave in this country. Because what we need in the United States of America is leaders in Washington, D.C. that actually put the interests of American citizens above all else. And with Republican Bernie Marino's Senate win in Ohio and Jim Justice's win in West Virginia, Trump will enjoy a Republican majority in the U.S. Senate. We need the Republican Party to start solving the problems of this country, and we have a significant number of problems. Dozens of House races across the country have yet to be called, but Speaker Mike Johnson, who won his bid for re-election in Louisiana, says he's confident the GOP okay, will retain its majority. Trouble. So look, I, it's too early to call everything, but we're, we're very optimistic. I mean, it looks good. I've been in the war room. I'm calling the candidates as they're calling the races. Republican control over the White House and Congress would give the GOP a big boost in passing its agenda. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And now we are going to fulfill that mission together. Still, many Christian leaders say followers of Jesus have an important responsibility as the nation works to move forward. And so we're trying to show people a way to say, hey, regardless if you're a Democrat or a Republican, especially as a Christian, you have to be civil, you have to be constructive, and you have to be looking to help your neighbor. And that's, that should be the focus. As Christians, let's let's try to reconcile and move people uh, closer together and move them forward uh, for the better of uh, everyone in this country. And some leaders say it's OK for Christians to see themselves as outsiders, as Jesus calls us to be. And when we recognize that we don't have to fit into our current cultural system, we can then engage our community, our culture, not out of anger or by complying to it, but instead in love. Trump says he believes success is what will bring the country back together. When he starts implementing his agenda and the country has some wins, he believes the nation will begin to heal. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington.
I think the nation will only heal when we humble ourselves before God. We have a, a lot of pride in America, and, and that pride is justified, whether it's in our form of government and, or in the economic success we've had or the technological success. Uh, we, we love to think of ourselves as exceptional. And, and in that, uh, are, are we losing sight of who is the main source of all of these blessings that we've enjoyed uh, now since our founding? The founders understood what the Bible had to say about kings, uh, about uh, what proper forms of government that God want. Uh, and in the history of the nation of Israel, God did not want them to have a king. Uh, he allowed them to have a king, but he didn't want it. He had a better form of government. And here it is in Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. In a European culture where divine right of kings, where the anointed leader uh, was to, to guide the nation and the people and uh, everyone looked to him for solutions, God had a better plan. And the better plan was we the people. And that better plan became enshrined in our constitution, which begins with those words, we the people. Let us be saints of the most high God. If, if you're looking for change in America, be the best saint you can possibly be. Let's be a society of Samaritans who care for the poor and needy. Let's reach out with hands of compassion and love to people who are downtrodden, who are marginalized. Let's be the body of Christ. And in that, the saints of the Most High God, we will get the dominion. We will get the authority that God so earnestly wants to give us, to give us a united nation, a nation who is one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let not, these not be aspirational words, but let's realize this government, it rests on us, the people, the society of America rests on us, its people. Are, are on a daily basis, are we acting with justice? Are we loving mercy? Are we walking humbly? Are we doing the things that God has told us to do? If we do, well, then he'll heal our land. He'll bring all this division back together again. And once again, we can be a nation, a city on a hill, an example to the entire world what can happen when people follow God. Well, CBN News Chief Political Analyst David Brody joins us now for more. Uh, so, David, how did he do it? How, how did he pull, pull off this tremendous victory? Well, I'd like to say it was the Rust Belt Gordon or the Sun Belt. It was both. It was both belts. It was a double belted victory, if you will. And uh, that's, that's the name of the game. And he did it with so many different groups, uh, Gordon. It, it's just fascinating. Look, I brought the receipts, as they like to say, and it's long. I had to print it out. Uh, we had to waste paper on this, but it's, well, I mean, look at this. I mean, literally, as I put on my glasses here, uh, he was up three points uh, from 2020 with uh, male voters. He was up two points with female voters, 13 points with Hispanic voters, evangelicals, five points. It goes on and on. The suburban vote, uh, union households, Gen Z. He was doing better in all of these groups. He didn't win these groups, but he did better than 2020. And what that did, Gordon, was provide for an electoral landslide, because even though it's right now technically with the Associated Press at 277, which gives him the presidency, it's most likely, as a matter of fact, let's just be honest, 99.9% .9 going to go to 312 electoral votes, which will be all seven battleground states. Well, I think uh, it's important to point out he also won the popular vote, which I didn't think he'd be able to do. I thought Harris would win the uh, popular vote. He'd win the electoral vote uh, just because that's how I saw it breaking. But uh, it's he's astounding everyone by by winning the popular vote. Yeah, five million uh, right now. That's the difference. He's got about a five million uh, person voter advantage over Kamala Harris. It might give or take a uh, half million or so, but it's going to be pretty substantial. You know, we always hear, Gordon, about a mandate. You know, the president always likes to say, uh, president-elect likes to say, we now have a mandate from the people. Well, not really uh, quite, a, quite often. But in this case, hard to argue that he doesn't have a mandate. Uh, look, 312 electoral votes, sweeping all battleground states, winning the popular vote. I 
$5 million. It, it makes you wonder, not only does he have a mandate, we know that, uh, but what signal that sends in America. And, you know, Gordon, I have to tell you, when he had those words in Butler, PA, uh, after the assassination attempt, actually during the assassination attempt, when he said, fight, 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 uh, I, I think that was the key because ultimately it played into what a bit of the American spirit is, which is to fight, fight, fight. Just ask the Brits. I mean, I, I think it was a not a round peg in a square hole. It was a square peg in a square hole. It fit perfectly. And I think that was a big part of this. Look, the bottom line here is that in 2016, uh, Donald Trump won as a kind of a white working class party guy. That didn't happen in 2024. It's now not a white working class party guy guy. He's a, it's a multicolored working class party guy, black vote up, Hispanic vote up, Asian Americans, really through, throughout all of it. Well, how big was the evangelical vote in, in the election? 81% uh, white evangelical turnout. To give you an idea, Gordon, in 2016, he had 80% white evangelical turnout. That's how the polls signify it or determine it uh, in terms of how they classify it, I should say. It was 80% in 2016. It took a dip in 2020 to 76%. And then last night, 81 percent. So uh, once again, impressive. And the Catholic vote, uh, even more impressive, a 13-point uh, swing, 13 points better. Uh, Donald Trump lost the Catholic vote to Joe Biden in 2020. Uh, he was up 13 points last night with Catholics across the country. So I guess, let me do the math, 13 and 5. That's an 18-point swing, actually. Just, just fascinating. It is. And, and I, I go back to when Harris skipped the, that Catholic meeting in New York. It just seemed to be, um, it, it didn't make any sense to me. She seemed to be just giving away that voting block. And um, anyway, uh, you, you, I guess we're, we're going to critique this for a long time mm -hmm. and maybe leave it to the historians. But looking forward, uh, the GOP now controls the Senate and not just by one or two votes. It looks like it's going to be a significant shift. So what is the in implications of that? How big will that be for Trump's term? It could get up to 55, potentially 56 senators. We haven't seen 56 GOP senators in, in a century. I, I mean, th this would be relatively unheard of. Having said that, uh, if we look at the map real quick, and I can just go to it real quick. This is the national map here. But if we go to the Senate map, uh, which is right up here, uh, the, the Associated Press right now has it at 52. Uh, you can see on the top right hand corner. But we've got some outstanding ones here. You can see Pennsylvania, Dave McCormick here. Uh, he should win that race. That'll be 53 out in Nevada, which is really a shock. Sam Brown, who no one was even talking about. Uh, everybody thought the Democrat Jackie Rosen would win. He looks like he's going to win. That would take it to 54. And then there's a couple of these in Wisconsin and Michigan that are uh, razor thin. So if you put it all together, it could go to 55, 56. And what that means is not only do you have a mandate, Gordon, uh, that the president-elect, soon-to-be President Trump will have, but he can get a lot of that agenda uh, through Congress, especially uh, extending those Trump tax cuts, which, of course, he had in 2016. Those were his tax cuts that he got through, and now he wants to extend them. That'll be probably the first thing he ends up doing. Okay, I warned you last night I was going to ask for oh, a prediction, no. so here we go. Oh, gosh. What's your prediction on the House of Representatives? I think they're going to take it. I do. I, th this is Talk about the wave election. You know, Gordon, in uh, 2022, everybody talked about, oh, here comes the red wave. It never materialized. But in 2024, it is materializing. So what's the difference? Here's the answer. It's Donald John Trump, a DJT, as they call him, so to speak. And that's the, that's the difference, because in 2022, it's a midterm election. Donald Trump was not on the ballot. You put Donald Trump on the ballot, and look at this. All of a sudden, we have a Senate that looks to be 54-55. The House, I believe, will go Republican. Speaker Mike Johnson's feeling confident. They see internal numbers there that they believe they'll take it. Now, having said that, just because they have a House of Representatives in Republican control doesn't necessarily mean they can cobble together 218 Republicans. Uh, good luck with that. That's like herding cats, uh, and, and it's difficult. So you put those two together, plus the White House, uh, there's going to be a lot of action on Capitol Hill and the White House uh, in January 2025. Yeah, and, and the first order mm -hmm. of business is who's going to be in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a very busy season yeah. still. Uh, and then uh, once we're through all that, I guess we're going to start campaigning for 2028. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, wouldn't that be great? I just, oh, just great. I, more, <laughs> me, more medication over the counter. It's time. That's right. All right, David, thanks for joining with us, and thanks for the prediction. You bet.